Okay, welcome back. You're probably chafing at the bit to actually get this to work. So what we're going to do is in our project, create a new folder. Okay, so new uh, directory, it's called in here. Let's call it shaders. This is where you can put all your shader code and keep it separate from everything. Now we're going to create two files in here. We're going to right click and we're going to come and find new file at the top. We're not creating a Python file, we're creating a text file basically. So let's call this our vert.vs and then we'll create another one called frag. So new file frag.vs. Okay, so this is where your vertex shader code will go. This code we write ourselves. We don't actually get it from Shader Toy. So basically what Shader Toy is doing, let me just bring this back over here. And you might want to look up this particular shader, Protean Clouds, because we're going to use this code to demonstrate it. And you'll want to be using this code so that you pick up on all the issues that I show you about as we go through it. Now, what's happening here? Remember I said this is calculated pixel by pixel. One pixel is going through this code and it's basically on a flat plane and that flat plane has these vertices on each corner okay so you've got to think of it like a flat plane with the vertices so the vertices and there's actually six of them because it's divided into like two triangles and we're going to pass six points through the vertex shader it gets converted into a whole bunch of fragments okay and then all those fragments end up going through this code here so we actually have to create some geometry in our scene that the shader then puts the image onto and that's basically a plane made of two triangles so let's actually write our vertex shader because it's actually nice and short. Once you've created this vertex shader, you can use it over and over again. And it's really only the frag files that you have to keep replacing with the shader code stuff. So first of all, we have to tell this uh, PyOpenGL or at least PyCharm and PyGame which version of OpenGL it is. So it's 330 core. And then we have to pass through our vertices. So we put in vec3, so it's a vector 3 with three values, x, y, and z, position, and semicolon. Don't forget that semicolon. We're also going to pass in vec2, which are our uv values. So vertex uv. Now, it's very important, these UV values, because they're used by the uh, fragment shader in calculating where pixels are on the screen and where your image should actually appear relative to them. And the last thing we need to go is out vec to UV. Okay, so we're passing in the UV, but we're passing it straight out again to the fragment but this is just the way that it has to be it gets passed through so void main and this is where things start to look a little bit like c code and we've got some squiggly brackets and then we want gl position now it's very important that you name this thing gl position exactly the same spelling as i've got there same capitalization it's going to be a vector for value and we'll go position dot x position dot y we only want a flat plane and we only care about the x and y values of that plane so basically it's sitting upright looking at the screen then for the next value i'm just going to put 0, 0.0 f for our z and 1.0 f for our w value which is important in shader code and next down here we're going to go UV which is the out UV equals the in UV so vertex UV like that okay that is all you need in here so the fragment shader let's 
do that, this is where things kind of get a bit interesting. So we first of all, we need this here. So just, just copy that and come down to here. Now, what we're going to do is just leave a few lines. I want you to go to Shader Toy. We're going to find this one here. And thanks to Nimitz, I should actually give this uh, contributor all the credit for this code because I did not write it and it looks really, really complex, but very beautiful. So thank you for uh, letting us use your code or for putting it and sharing it with everyone on shadertoy.com. Let's now grab a copy of it. Okay, so I'm just going to duck down until I get right to the bottom and control C, make a copy of that. Let's just put that to the side and I'm going to paste it down in here. Okay, so don't worry about green squiggly lines or anything. You really do not want to dig around and change any more of this code than is absolutely necessary because you probably will break something if you don't know what you're doing. Right, now coming into this shader, the frag, it also has a main. Now, in OpenGL, we have to have a void main. So in Shader Toy, it's called main image. Get rid of the image bit. We don't want that. Now, this will be down the bottom somewhere of that frag code. Now, look at these. We've got um, an out vector frag color and an in vector frag coordinate. Now, this in vector frag coordinate is obviously based on the position of our uh, vertices that we pass through in the vertex shader. And the out frag color is what gets drawn as the pixel color on the screen. Now, this is all very nice, but we don't need them. So let's get rid of them out of there. Oh, we do need them. We just don't want them to be right there. Okay, so with that done, let's go up to the top of the code and we have to declare what's coming in and out of here. I'm going to paste this in and talk about it while you're typing it up. So this is the in vec2 for the UVs coming from your vertex shader. All shader code has access, or I should say shader toy code, has access to some changing, possible changing values called uniforms. And you will find some or all of these in shader toy code. It's very important that you actually include them and program to them. Otherwise, you'll get errors saying it can't find them, haven't been defined. So these have to be spelt the same as what I've got here. So I time capital T, I resolution um, capital R, I mouse because a lot of sh shader toy stuff does move with the mouse. Okay, time as a float, vector two for resolution and vector two for I mouse. Now the out is a vector four frag underscore color. So this is the value coming out that will be drawn at each pixel location. Once you've got that, we're going to go right back down to the bottom of our code and find our main. So here's our main. Now the last thing that this does is spits out the frag color. So frag color equals that. And I'm just going to change that to frag underscore color so it matches the thing that's coming out now that's the only place you should find that frag underscore color having been used throughout the code okay so we're almost ready to rock and roll with this except these values here have to come from somewhere and they have to come from our code so when we come back in the next video we will put the last few things in place to make sure that we actually pass this through and that's where all of the OpenGL coding basically occurs. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.